My name is Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and in this lecture I'm going to describe and discuss five basic rules of inference. These rules of inference will help you if you're analyzing arguments or if you have interest in constructing your own arguments. They're very simple, uh, and if used correctly, they can help you build very, very complex arguments. Okay, let's begin. Five rules of inference. Okay, so the first rule is known as modus ponens. Modus ponens is the first rule, and it says the following. If A happens, then B will happen. A happens, these three dots means therefore, therefore B will happen. If I jump, I will fall. If I jump, I will fall. I jump, therefore, I will fall. This is known as modus ponens. Number two is known as modus tollens. Number two is known as modus tollens. It says, if A happens, then B will happen. If A happens, B will happen. However, B has not happened. Therefore, therefore, A will not happen. If I eat too much, my stomach will hurt. If I eat too much, my stomach will hurt. My stomach doesn't hurt. Therefore, I have not eaten too much. If I eat too much, my stomach will hurt. My stomach doesn't hurt. Therefore, I have not eaten too much. Number two is modus tollens. Number three, very effective argument. It's known as hypothetical. Why? Number three is known as hypothetical syllogism. It says if A occurs, then B will occur. If A occurs, then B will occur. B occurs, then C will occur. So if A, then B, if B, then C, therefore, well, if A happens, then B will happen. And if B happens, then C will happen. And what you see is that B is sort of the link. The link between what? Well, it's the link between A and C. So therefore, therefore, if A happens, then you gotta write C. The example, if it rains, I will bring an umbrella. If it rains, I will bring an umbrella. If I bring an umbrella, I will not get wet. If I bring an umbrella, I will not get wet. Therefore, if it rains, I will not get wet. Therefore, if it rains, I will not get wet. So. That's the hypothetical syllogism. Number four is the disjunctive syllogism. Number four is the disjunctive syllogism, and it says Either A will happen, or, this is or, either A will happen, or B will happen. Either A will happen, or B will happen, which means that one of the two of them must happen. Either this will happen, or this will happen. Okay, well, A doesn't happen. Either A will happen, or B will happen. However, A doesn't happen. Therefore, what's your conclusion? Since one of them has to occur, and this one does not occur, 
the only option is that this must occur. Therefore, B. Either we'll go to the movies or we'll go out to eat. Either we'll go to the movies or we'll go out to eat. We have not gone to the movies. Therefore, we will go out to eat. Either we'll go to the movies or we'll go out to eat. We have not gone to the movies. Therefore, we will go out to eat. And then the last example is, uh, is one that helps quite a bit. Uh, it's very simple, but it's very effective. Number five. Number five is conjunction. So if we have uh, premise one and premise one says A, and then we have premise two and premise two says B, so we have uh, an example. I have gone to the store. I have bought a gallon of milk. I have gone to the store. I have bought a gallon of milk. Well, very simply, I can combine the two to say A and B. I have gone to the store and bought a gallon of milk. If I have, I have gone to the store and I have separately, I have bought a gallon of milk, I can make the conclusion that I have gone to the store and bought a gallon of milk. So that's conjunction. Um, those were the five basic rules of inference. There are many more, but I think those are the most essential. I think mastery of these five rules will help you in analyzing argument and in constructing argument of your own. I hope this has been influential. I hope you've learned a little bit. Thank you for taking your time. Goodbye.